Hi, my name is Nick, and I'm a problem gambler. Um, my, my gambling started uh, probably about five years ago. And it started with uh, online gambling with the uh, British Columbia Lottery Corporation's website, playnow.com. I, <clears throat> I started playing in small amounts. And I originally won $1,700 on Kino. So, which was, it was, it was really exciting to, to actually win something, like win the lottery. And before that, I had never, I had never been a, a problem gambler. Like, I had never gone to the casino I had never played online slots or games, things like that. But I don't know, winning that $1,700 triggered something. And just the website itself, the way the games played, it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't have that sort of addiction. The only way that I can possibly try to explain it is... Um, <clears throat> Someone with a heroin addiction, I guess. You know, you get that... You don't... You never intend to become addicted to it. It's just like... It seems like a fun thing at the time. An experience. So, I won this money. And then I started playing more. And I would... I would be up. I would be up late at night playing slots and winning small amounts. And I would stop playing and... And that was okay. I could I could walk away from it. And then it progressed a little worse. And I was I was charging fifty dollars on my credit card, a hundred dollars on my credit card, and it just went on and on and on like that. So it got so bad that I eventually maxed out my credit card. It was thousands of dollars. And then some life events happened. My dad passed away. <clears throat> and after a while, I inherited quite like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And I paid off my credit cards and I thought everything was great. And then I went back to playing the games online. And I never thought to to ban myself or what they call a self exclusion, voluntary self exclusion, is what we have in this province. And so I I have gambled over the years, easily tens of thousands of dollars. And currently I am paying off a visa bill that was about eleven thousand dollars, and I've paid off a few thousand so far which has been very hard. I've had to work so many jobs. I have no life. I rarely saw my family in the last two years. I was delivering pizzas, working at a bar, working my full-time job. And it's not like... A lot of people might say, well, why don't you just not go? Why don't you just stop? Why, why, don't, why do you keep spending the money? Why do you think you're going to win? Well... It's not quite that easy. There's a certain rush to it. And nowadays, I have the highest anxiety. And what I'm going to do tonight, it just makes my heart pound. Like, it's, it's just, it's beating out of my chest right now. I recently saw a television show on the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, um, a show called The Fifth Estate. And a gambler in Ontario, who was self-excluded, had took a $20 bill, and they, they tested various casinos to see if he would be challenged for ID, um, if anyone would come up and ask him for ID, if anyone would even notice. And so, <clears throat> in Ontario, apparently they have facial recognition um, for their videos, uh, for their video cameras. Um, I don't know if the same is for BC, but I know for a fact that they have a, uh, 
license plate readers at the entrances. And so I'm not actually going to drive into the lot because that would just be too easy. This is more, I'm not going there tonight to try and win a lot of money. I'm going there tonight to see if anyone actually challenges me because I've banned myself twice now. The first time for six months because I just, I couldn't commit to more than that because I don't know why. Again, it's hard to explain. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to do it, and this is just, it's, it's an experiment to see if anyone actually cares. To see if the processes put in place actually deter problem gamblers from returning to a place that has essentially robbed them of their lives. Gambling has destroyed my life. Gambling has destroyed my personal life, my financial life, um, my, my health. It's not fun anymore. And I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I've apologized to my family. I have... I've, the second time I banned myself was in October, which was a couple of months ago, and that was for a year. So I'm banned for a year now. So the security guards there, most of them know my face. They've seen me for, you know, at least a year and a half now. And I'm in Courtney, BC, <clears throat> and there's only one casino. Um, and it's called Chances. And it's not a huge place, but it's the only casino around. So tonight I, I'm going to put you in my pocket and we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if any of the, the door people stop me. And uh, hopefully they do. Because if they don't, that's a problem. It's a problem because... You can't walk into a bar where they serve alcohol without providing a piece of identification, which they scan on a machine. And honestly, that should be the same concept for a casino, because you have an entire pub there with liquor. You have slot machines, which you can only play if you were 19. And I don't know how old you think I am. I'm 41. And I don't know. Some people say I look younger. I, I probably look like I'm an adult. But seriously, someone should at least ask me for ID. So I'm going to go walk over there now. And now we're going to see what happens. And uh, hopefully this all works out and you can still see what's going on and going to put the camera in my pocket and uh, let's go see.
Yeah, so three security guards at the front door did not ID me at all. None of them even paid much notice. It's pretty sad. Seven minutes I spent twenty dollars. Well, I spent nineteen dollars and sixty-five cents, I guess. None of the three security guards at the front door even said boo. Which is pretty sad. And my heart was just I was just racing sitting there. It's just it it just feels like the most wrong thing ever to be doing now. I, I hate this place. I, I hate, absolutely hate the casino. Clearly no one gives a crap. And um, 
I could go in there every night. Maybe the security guard who helped me with my self-exclusion application would recognize me and stop me. In the year and a half that I've been to that casino, I've been challenged once for ID. And that security guard, I, I've rarely seen that guy. So, what I would like to see is a little more accountability. I think the BC Lottery Corporation needs to implement some rules. Rules like mandatory checking of ID. A scanner at the front door where people can just, they can scan their ID, a, a guard can watch them, or they can hand their ID over, and a security guard can scan it for them. But um, honestly, something needs to change. Because gambling has um, caused far more problems for me than anything else I have ever done. I can't even describe the, the pain it causes me and the people I love. Um, I can't describe the financial problems it's caused me. I can't describe the colossal anxiety and stress and mental health issues. I, there were points where I considered suicide because I have life insurance through my job. I've been to counseling. Um, another issue is that in Courtney there is no Gamblers Anonymous. You can, maybe if you went to church, which I don't, maybe you could get help through your church, I, I don't know. But there is no, there are no resources unless you're an alcoholic. And for me, I'm, I've never been someone who goes to alcohol. Um, but gambling? It went from something fun to something horribly wrong. And the thoughts that go through my mind are, how can I win the jackpot in order to reverse the financial damage I've done to my family? And going there tonight is just the most wrong thing ever. It's just that something needs to change. And people with this problem can't do it on their own. Um, and I don't know what the answers are. But the people who run these places, they are just robbing people. I don't know who collects from all of the money that is drained from the elderly people that you see in there. But you can see it on their faces. Some of the, some of the older people in there they look, they look spent. Like, some of those people are spending their life savings, their pensions. The things that they won't get back. Because the chances are, you're not going to win that grand prize. You're not going to win that jackpot. 
and going in there I risked a $5,000 fine or being escorted out which is embarrassing but you know what I I had to do this and now I know that no one cares that's my story and I hope you got something out of it. Bye for now.